Hello everyone, this video continues our series on user interface design. Specifically, this video talks about input and output design. The learning objective for this video is as follows. After watching this video, students should be able to understand key principles and best practices for designing usable input and output mechanisms in the user interface. If you remember back to a previous video we saw, we defined a user interface as having three key components. This video focuses on two of those three, the input mechanism, defining the way the system captures information, and the output mechanism, defining the way that the system provides information back to the users or to other systems. Here are some basic principles of input design. The goal is to simply and easily capture accurate information for the system. The way you capture that information should reflect the nature of the inputs. For example, if you want to capture information about dates, you can design your system to show a calendar. This is a good way to reflect the nature of the type of information. Further, you should find ways to simplify the collection of data. One way to simplify data input is to use source data automation. Source data automation reduces duplicate work and processing time, and it decreases cost and the probability of error. In other words, if you need to gather a lot of information from the user, don't necessarily always rely on them typing in a lot of information. Source data automation can be obtained by using the following technologies barcode readers and scanners, optical character recognition, magnetic stripe readers, for example, those you see on credit cards. It's easier to get credit card information just by swiping the magnetic reader rather than having the user type in their long credit card number every time. Smart cards, for example, the open and close and lock and unlock doors, and RFID tags which are basically barcodes with chips built into them. Again, we want to minimize keystrokes because keyboard entry is slow and error prone. Never ask for information that can be obtained other ways. Even if you don't have barcode readers and other source data automation technologies, there are other ways to minimize keystrokes. For example, by using input options such as radio buttons, on-screen selection lists, numeric controls, checkboxes, drop-down lists and calendar picker controls. Input validation makes sure that the data that you are gathering through input is accurate and complete. There are several different types of input validation. These include a completeness check, like those you've seen if you forget to fill in a field on a form, a format check, making sure that you've typed things in the right format, a range check, for example, a number must be between a minimum and a maximum amount. There is a check digit check. These can be used for certain numbers like credit card numbers and social security numbers. Credit card numbers are actually built on very comp complicated mathematical formulas. For example, Visa numbers, if you take the odd numbers of the credit card number and multiply them by two, and then add those together along with the even numbers, you get a total number. If that total number is divisible by 10, the system can tell that, that it is a valid Visa credit card number. Consistency checks make sure that data that are input into separate fields are consistent with each other. For example, if you put San Francisco, California as your city and state, but you put something different as your zip code, like 84725, that isn't a zip code for that city, then the system can ask to make sure that you're inputting the right information. Finally, database checks check your input against a separate database. For example, a lot of systems are connected to the USPS Postal Address Database. So if you type in an address that isn't listed in the USPS database, it will tell you that you have put in invalid information. Let's talk briefly about output design principles. The key thing is to manage the information load. Give people the needed information, but no more. Don't overwhelm them with information. Utilize various report types, such as detail, summary, exception, and graphical, and media to satisfy users' output requirements. For example, if you're using accounting software and you just want to see overall revenues and expenses, then the system should provide a way to see just a summary report. On the other hand, if you want to see a breakdown of expenses, then the system should be able to provide a detailed report. Provide different options depending on different user needs. One final key principle for output design is to minimize bias. 
And there are two ways to do this, through scaling correctly when you're using graphical interfaces and sorting thoughtfully when you're using text. Let's start with sorting. There are many different ways to sort tables. If you have a list of the 50 states and the tax revenue that they bring in, you could sort by the total tax revenue, you could sort by geographic region, or you could sort alphabetically by state name. The way that you sort could introduce potential bias into the way that the user interprets the information that is output from the system. The second suggestion here is to scale correctly. What I mean by that is when you're using a graph, make sure that the axes and the labels you use don't introduce bias. Here are two graphs that say the same thing. Both of them show an increase in house prices from 80,000 to 82,000 over the years 1998 and 1999. However, the one on the left you can see looks like a much bigger increase, whereas the one on the right is scaled correctly from a starting point of zero 